Hello, I'm Colin Volchin and I'm going to talk to you about Earn Valley Management today. Uh, I'm with Adept Knowledge Management and we're in Aberdeen. It's in May and it's a great day. Earn Valley Management is one of three really great techniques involved in project control. I have a colleague who thinks that the word breakdown structure is the most important thing. I think critical path analysis is pretty important, but both of them are vital to get to Earn Value Management. Earn Value Management helps you to monitor a project to the extent of knowing where you are in relation to what the plan was, how much you spent in relation to what you planned to spend, and then working out what you've got left to do. And from that, you can forecast a few things. First of all, you can forecast the end cost of the project, the estimate at completion, it's called. Some people call it the end life forecast. You can also estimate how long it's going to take you to finish the project or what the project duration is going to be. So these are pretty important things to uh, know about a project and if you can answer those questions on a project, you're in control. So we start off by moving from um, all the resources or costs on a critical path network through to a bar chart as we've done before and from the bar chart we've created on a graph like this with time along there and either our costs, money or pounds up here or resources we've developed our old friend the S-curve and that's telling us this is the end of the project, the project duration, this is the planned budget at completion, notice that BAC so this is where we see the baseline of the project. We're going to do all the work. We're going to spend all this amount of money over that time. At any point in the project, we might be monitoring where we are. And I'm going to take one point at time now, there. And I'm going to put up a couple of the things that we will know if we're in control or trying to get in control of the project. The first thing and the most important thing that we'll want to measure is the progress. And we put that progress into place by plotting it all the way along to there. That progress is technically called the earned value. But that's the physical progress on the job, but measured in budget terms. Pretty important, but a vital thing to do. We compare that with this point here on our baseline, which is, if you like, our plan. That's sometimes called the planned value. I'm just putting PV there. So we immediately know this is where we are in relation to where we plan to be. That's pretty vital. And from there, we can do some forecasting things. For example, we could, by measuring an index of how well we're doing against how well we thought we were going to do, that's called a schedule performance index. And that simply is a measure of the progress divided by the plan, or we could say EV divided by PV. And then using that index, if we simply take the project duration and that index of performance, what we can do is make a forecast of the project duration. And that is simply the project duration divided by this schedule performance index. I think that's a pretty important index because this is really your effectiveness. How well are you doing in relation to what you plan to do? Now the next most important thing to measure on that is what's known as the cost performance index. To do that, you need to know what the costs are. How much have you spent to do that work? Well, you can see from the diagram that I'm about to draw that I'm mostly used to seeing very, very miserably performing projects. This is showing the actual cost of that project, and it shows that we're spending more money than we plan to spend, and also more money than the value that we plan to get out of that. So that's our actual cost. And surprisingly enough, it's known as AC. So we can now measure what I talked about as being the cost performance index. And that cost performance index, some people call that productivity or efficiency. And what we're saying is, 
what did we get for what we spent? Well, what we got was the earned value. So that's our earned value divided by our actual cost. So that's our efficiency or productivity. Now we can use this fella to estimate our cost at completion or the estimate at completion. And it's very simply the budget at completion divided by the cost performance index. If I show you those things diagrammatically, we can forecast this end time of the project by projecting this, the progress on this, if you like, re-estimated plan, telling us this is our forecast project duration, and this is our slip or gain, and sadly it's usually a slippage, and if you like concomitantly with that, we have an estimate of where our costs are going to go, and that follows a curve something like that. So we end up with an estimate at completion, and this of course is our budget overrun. And that's really simply exactly what we need to find out about this project. There are some simple objections to this first index, the Schedule Performance Index, and the objection to it is a philosophical one. Why use a ratio of costs or a vertical ratio when really what you want to do is to estimate something in time or horizontally? So in the British Standard they've got a much better version of this uh, that's been around since about uh, 2002. And we talk about uh, the relationship in time. Some people call that the earned schedule. We could say that we would have achieved or should have achieved that earned value at that point in time. We drop that down onto the timeline, it's called OD, the original duration, and our time is known as the time now is the actual time expended. So we have a really good measure now of a new kind of schedule performance index. The schedule performance index on time is called and OD is calculated as OD divided by ATE. It's just a better version of that one. We can use it in a similar way and it implies that we can do a forecast project duration, this time with a subscript T and it's similarly project duration divided by the scheduled performance index time. That's absolutely red hot stuff and just perfect for forecasting where we're going on the project. I think these are the most important things for project managers to do. To understand their performance, effectiveness, that's the schedule performance index, two of them, and to understand the efficiency or the productivity, that's the cost performance index. If I come from another discipline, if I'm an accountant, uh, unfortunately um, I didn't become accountant, I got the numerical skills but I don't have the personality to become an accountant. So I, I ended up as a kind of very poor engineer, but I can still understand some of these things. So really we can look at some things called variances and that's what accountants like to see because they like to see the, the difference right now at this point in time. And the first thing they want to look at is this one here, the difference between the earned value and the cost. And that's the cost variance, surprisingly enough. So you've got the cost variance as being the earned value minus the actual cost. And of course, you can see from my diagram that that's negative. The negative variance, it's adverse, means it's a bad deal. So this is a failing project. The other variance that would attract some attention would be this one here, the variance between the plan and the earned value. And again, that's known as the schedule variance. This time it's on cost. So that would be the earned value minus the planned value. Again, negative, showing an adverse variance. And you're probably ahead of me by now. The other thing we would want to look at is this schedule variance on time. That one there was the schedule variance on cost. This schedule variance on time is going to be simply this one here, schedule variance time. And now the parameters going into there are the original duration, OD, minus this uh, ATE, the actual expended time. That's going to be a negative number in this setup. That's because this project is running late. I mean, it's the complete disaster here. This is running late. 
and this is also running above cost, so it's not going to be a pleasant thing to be on. So we've ended up with um, the three vital things, if you like, the vital groupings of information in here. And the first three are the earned value, the progress, compared to the plan value, and then we've monitored the actual cost. So those three are the building blocks. That's the information at time now. What we can do from there is use them to find the most important things, which are the forecasts of where we're likely to go if things carry on in this way. Those were the estimate at completion and the uh, forecast project duration. And the third pieces of intelligence that come out of this are the variances. And if you recall, the cost variance was the difference between the earned value and the actual cost. The schedule variance was the difference between the progress that we made, the earned value, and the planned value. That was the earned value minus the planned value. And our schedule variance on time was our original duration. You'll recall that that original duration was when we should have achieved this earned value, and that's minus the actual time. And that's going to tell us how late we're running on this project. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's summarize. We've got all the progress, earned value, and the actual costs. So we've got our three building blocks. We've used them to calculate the indices of our performance. And from there, we've used them to make forecasts of the project duration and the estimate at completion. We have also got the variances, how currently we are far away or close to or better than where we intended to be. So all this information, all this intelligence is extremely valuable in project control and project management and vital for trying to work out what we need to get back on track. But that's another story and we'll pick up that one at a later date. So goodbye for now.